So as I turn this that corner. This video is going to be a quilt. I, I oh, can't yeah, wait it, to see it, what you. It will totally like. work. <laughs> I'm completely confident now. <laughs> Business is moving faster than ever. In tech, it's moving even faster. In order to stay ahead, we need to be constantly learning. This is Driving Change, where we go for a ride with tech leaders to gain insights on their beliefs, habits, routines, and influences. Today, we go for a ride with Jamie Finkelstead, Chief Technology Officer of SPS Commerce. On the ride, we talk about trusting your intuition, connecting your passion with what you do, and solving problems that matter. So you are currently the CTO at SPS Commerce, correct? Right. correct? Yes. So what is SPS? At SPS, we run the world's largest retail network. So okay. that means we connect, uh, connect 65,000 uh, people in retail together to exchange uh, fulfillment information, order product, find new products, find new trading partners, uh, and understand uh, how products are selling. Okay, and you've been there for about three years? About three years, a little over three years. Okay, so what has been the transition since you got there from a technology side? We've been really focused on evolving our technology organization to meet the needs of, our, of the growth of our business. So mm -hmm. we've um, built out our, uh, our shipping velocity significantly so that we can get code through our environments and out to customers faster. Okay. We've awesome. scaled our platform significantly so that we can uh, uh, deal with the, the growth in the, in the business. Um, and we've really focused a lot on our culture and making sure that we have the, the culture of a technology that you need to have in a technology team as you're building out your platforms. As the CTO of SPS, how's your role defined? Because I know the role of CTO can definitely be defined differently in different companies. What is it for SPS? So I'm responsible for and, and lead the technology organization, which covers three different or four different continents. Yep. Uh, it's a team of about 350 people. All of our software development, uh, our, the, so the development of all our new products, the 24 by 7 operations of our production environment, uh, building out new retailers that come into our network okay. is part of my team. And then additionally have the corporate technology functions uh, as well as the security uh, wow. functions. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. That's a lot. It's a great job. Looking at your background, you know, I, I find it interesting that your, your bio reads as if you were in Silicon Valley. You've been in all these different tech startups and acquisitions and you're in Minnesota. It started with Big Charts, is that yep. right? Yep. So what was Big Charts and how did that happen? In the uh, mid to late 90s, uh, uh, Phil Hoshkis and I, uh, a small group of folks, we built out uh, a company called Big Charts, which was a uh, website in the early days of the web, okay. uh, pre-Web 2.0 even, yep. that served financial charts and stock data to individual investors. And then importantly, we also licensed that service uh, as an application service provider, which is what we called it before it was SaaS, okay. uh, to financial services firms. So at one point, there were, we served 18 of the top 20 financial services firms, the charting experiences in their websites. And then you also spent time over at 8th Bridge, is, is that right? Yeah, so I, uh, I was a CTO for, uh, CO and CTO actually, for a company called Alvenda. Uh, Alvenda won the Minnesota Cup when I was an entrepreneur in residence at Split Rock Partners, uh, Michael Gorman there lo was looking at investing in the company, and uh, I assisted with the due diligence on that. And then, along with the Series A round that uh, that Split Rock did, I joined as COO and CTO of Elvenda, which then uh, eventually became uh, Eighth Bridge. Okay, and then Eighth Bridge went along, and then they were eventually sold as well. Is that right? Yeah, so I am. The, we did it. We we launched a, our platform. We tried a couple of different things. Uh, did some really innovative stuff with distributed social commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I actually decided to uh, to leave the company, and then uh, the company was sold to uh, an advertising agency a few months after that. Okay. I think one thing a lot of people don't know is um, the CTO's role in raising money. Can you explain a little bit, like typically, how what happens and what their role yeah. in that is? 
So, I mean, if you're building a technology company, uh, investors have, they want to know what, you know, who is leading the technology organization and, yep. and uh, how do they execute and, you know, how do they build a team. Yep. Um, the, uh, I think, you know, investors look for the CTO to be a founder, preferably. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so that they have the, that they're, you know, part of the core team. Sure. Um, and, uh, and you know, one of the things that I found interesting is when, what different people think uh, CTO does. So for example, when we were raising money in the Valley, I would talk to some uh, investors and they would think as CTO that you were like the idea person. And, the guy that sits in his yeah, little cave and just You know, don't turn work. the lights on and yeah. just ship things. Um, you know, not able to like actually run a team, build a team, deal yep. with operational matters. You know, my, in my background, I always uh, look at you know building, operating the technology team, uh, all parts of technology. You know, I think a lot of people in IT or technology are really interested in working in software companies or being part of the, a ride in an emerging tech company. You've been in a lot of them. How do you find them and how do you know they're the right one to join? Um, well, for me, I, I think about things like the culture of the organization. I think for technology particularly, understanding the culture of the team yep. uh, is really important. Yeah, you know, personally, I look for companies that are building uh, platforms um, and are, are kind of at the center of an ecosystem. Okay. I always want to find something where the the product and service that we operate is kind of the key to the ecosystem, not okay. not a peripheral. Um, and then I think looking for the right type of technology. Most of the folks that I know and the organizations that I've been involved in are, are pretty forward thinking about technology and using new and innovative ways of solving problems. And not every organization has that need. Yep. Um, matching that to your personal uh, interests is important as well. Looking back, what advice would you give your 25-year-old self? Trust your intuition. Certain decisions are really uh, good decisions to make with data. Other decisions, um, you should you should trust your intuition equally yep. as much. Always focus on the team. Um, okay. You know, one of the things that I think uh, leaders can forget is that you know star engineers are great, but if they're not a good member of the team, that's not a good fit for your organization. Yeah. Anything you did specifically you think was helpful for you to kind of get in the position that you are now? Um, work really hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I don't, I, you know, honestly, I, I was meeting with a, a CEO founder today and it was the conversation we had, you know, right off the bat is that some people are just not willing to put in the work, right? I mean, um, as easy, simple as that is. I mean, you know, so I, I would say, first of all, first thing I would say is that uh, anybody who doesn't admit that there's uh, timing and and luck has something to do with uh, where where things end up. Uh, I think I think that's always part of it. I happened to be uh, in college when literally the web was being created. Yep. Um, and I happened to be there to be around the first generation of companies that were building on the web. But I, you know, I think that what I would say is, um, you know. Focus on what matters. Uh, always think about how you're learning and, and evolving your skills, um, and and connect what you're doing to your passion. I personally, I am fundamentally passionate about technology. Yep. And I often tell people, if there was not, you know, if there wasn't a great career to be had in technology, I'd just be in technology without a great career. Mm. Um, that's I I love it. Uh, yep. It's what I do. And I think that uh, connecting your passion to what you do is really um, a really important part of being happy. Hmm.
I do a decent amount of reading. So when it comes to kind of the more evergreen topics, like yep. how, you know, organizational design and how you do, um, you know, build teams and leadership topics, um, you know, there's, there's, there's more that you, more to read than you could ever read in your whole life. Is there any, any specific books that are some of the, your favorites? Yeah, you know, I'm kind of old school. I really liked uh, Peter Drucker's uh, The Effective Executive. Is, uh, yep. It was a really uh, significant book that I, that I enjoyed. Um, His books are timeless. Oh, yeah. They're, they're so timeless. They they're are. so good. You know, I'm a big uh, um, advocate of GTD, getting things done. Yep. Uh, so I've read David Allen's books on, on that um, and, think, and practice that regularly to make sure I stay on top of everything that needs to get done. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about MinStar. I know you've been actively involved in that. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that community and the events. So MiniStar is the nonprofit that runs Minibar and Mini Demo. We okay. uh, are the we our mission is to connect people who are passionate about technology in the Twin Cities area uh, in the state of Minnesota. And then we run Mini Demo, which is uh, a, a demo event working software only seven demos seven minutes long they're very different events mini demo is a great place to network and get to see what's happening in the community uh, mini bar is a great place to learn about technology and to uh, share your uh, what you've learned with other people in the community as well most executives are always working on some sort of big problem or challenge. What's what's up top of mind for you right now? Yeah, top of mind for me right now is that uh, at SPS we've had an amazing track record of growth for the last you know, decade plus. Okay. Uh, but I think that um, I'm very interested in understanding and figuring out how our platform and products can enable uh, even more growth. Okay. And uh, I think there's some really innovative stuff we can do in that area over the course of the next uh, number of years. Excellent. Well, great. Right. Thanks a lot. I Thank appreciate you. it. It was fun. Good to chat. Hey, this is Jeff Martin again. If you go to leadbychange.com, you can see this show and other shows. If you subscribe, you can get early access to new shows and also exclusive content. Thanks for watching.